Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. Pretty hard to believe, but we're already in January of 2022. With that being the case, I thought, why not do a very brief, I know you've heard that before, sort of look back video on 2021. Some more of the highlights, more of the low points, um, and what, kind of, what to look forward to for 2022 as far as my astrophotography, and of course, this channel as well. So summarizing 2021, what comes to mind? Well, weather-wise, the word clouds, definitely. We had a lot of clouds this year. It was a bit disappointing as far as weather. A bit is a bit of an understatement. We just really did not have any, you know, multiple stretches of clear nights. Very few. Whereas uh, last year, even though I only started in, I think it was June, end of June of 2020, we had, you know, I remember multiple nights of, multiple occasions of, you know, two, three clear nights in a row. And this year we just really didn't, especially the summer was really disappointing when you're expecting to have those clear nights. We just didn't have them. So that was disappointing. I was hoping to do some longer images. I was hoping to get up to like 15, 20 hour images, but it's difficult. You know, when you're, when you start a project and you know, you're not imaging for sometimes two, three weeks, it's hard to string together three, four or five nights in a row on a particular target because you're always keeping in mind too that you have a list of things you want to shoot, particularly if you're like me and you're still within your second year, not even two years of astrophotography. You have a lot of targets that I want to image. And those targets are moving every single night a little bit more, you know, east to west or wherever it is. And I have somewhat of a limited window of imaging. I don't have a view to the west where I, where I image regularly. So when things start to go past zenith and towards the west, western skies, they're basically out of reach for me. So it's always been a balance of trying to image what I had planned to and getting enough data to make a nice picture, but you know, not having the luxury of being able to image four or five nights on one target and being able to put together something like a 15, 20 hour image like I was hoping to. The most I got this year, I think was 12, around 12 hours. That was my Crescent Nebula. And that came out pretty good. I was happy with it. Definitely looking forward to shooting that again next year um, with some more focal length as many other targets now that I have some bigger scopes. But yeah, you know, I'm hoping we get some better weather in 2022 and I'm able to put together a few 15, maybe even 20 hour images. That would be amazing. Uh, that would really help to get some better quality data that, and to sort of really step forward in my astrophotography. But Looking back on the year, you know, I started with my trusty Star Tracker, the uh, Star Adventurer, and of course my my go-to DSLR Canon modified DSLR. That's how I started, and I did a lot of images. Probably imaged for better part of six months, maybe even longer, um, with with that. And then I sort of slowly switched to my uh, dedicated astrophotography cameras, and of course using the ASI Air along with that and some bigger telescopes now that I have my newest mount, my, op my Optron CEM40EC. So that was sort of the progression through the year. Uh, it didn't happen as fast as I wanted. I'm sort of the type of person where I get comfortable and it's hard to get out. I, to get out of that sort of comfort zone where I'm, I know that it works, I can get out there, I can set up in you know 30, 40 minutes and I can be imaging. But when you start using new equipment, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of wasted nights, um, but that's just part of the process. That's what I've sort of learned this year, you know, not to get too hung up about it. And that's, it's all part of learning astrophotography. You're going to have nights where you go out and you struggle, something doesn't work, and then you finally get set up. And what happens, of course, the clouds roll in. That happened multiple times this year, but what can you do? Um, I always try to look as every single night as a learning experience, whether it was good or bad. And that's kind of just how you have to look at things. And I was able to make progress this year, as mentioned, using my new mount. Uh, I was able to do longer exposures all the way up to four minutes unguided. So super happy about that. And it was definitely reflected in the quality of my images towards the end of the year, I would say. But, um, you know, using some of my bigger scopes, the 102 here, uh, this one, I, I did a review on it. Hope you're able to catch it. This one is actually going to be most likely on its way out in the next couple of months and replaced by its bigger brother, the 127. So really looking forward to using that. A little bit more focal length and I'll probably that'll be my go-to for galaxy season. Now that being said, I still have my Edge HD and that um, is a great telescope for galaxies. It's just that I do want to get out there with it. 
again, going back to my comfort zone, I've kind of gotten the hang of using this and its bigger brother, and I love the quality of these refractors. So I'm a refractor guy. You guys know that I've mentioned that before. Um, I do want to use the Edge HD for some galaxies, hopefully towards the end of galaxy season this winter, but definitely for planetary. I didn't do any planetary in 2021. That was a bit disappointing. The, the weather was terrible at the, end of, at the end of summer, especially when Saturn and Jupiter were at opposition. So that kind of um, foiled my plans to do planetary and get that Edge HD working. And of course, as well, I didn't have the proper counterweights for the mount. So once I finally got my, op my Ioptron mount, what do you know, the counterweight they gave me is not heavy enough to balance the Edge HD. So I had to order that. That took a few months on it, just that itself. So that's the kind of year it was. I know many of you guys can relate to that. Bad weather and wait times for equipment. So all that being said, I wasn't able to do any planetary, but I'm hoping to do that in 2022. And of course, just use that Edge HD in general. It's an amazing scope. Um, I haven't even used it for visual. I've done very little visual this year. But I was hoping to, you know, at least view the planets with it. And I didn't even get a chance to do that. So I, I uh, you know, that was a bit disappointing. Uh, there was a few targets that I didn't get to that I wanted to. One of them in, uh, definitely that comes to mind was Pleiades. Um, I was hoping to get to a dark sky site. That just never happened. And I think the window on that is too, is gone now. As I mentioned, that's setting in the western sky. So I probably won't get around to Pleiades. So that's a bit disappointing. But definitely I will be imaging that next fall. 2022 there's a few other you know uh, targets that i missed that i really wanted to image but i'll make sure i make a, a note of those and, and get around to them in 2022 for sure one thing i didn't miss was andromeda i was able to capture that again and it was probably i would say my favorite image of the year i was very proud of this uh, particularly because at the time i was still shooting with a star tracker and 60 second exposures and so i was really happy with the way that image turned out i was really happy to get helix in uh, target done that was one that i've been hoping to image for you know since i started this hobby and i was able to do that i'm looking forward to doing it again this year with more focal length so not just the sharp star even though it, you know i was happy with the image i'm looking forward to shooting it with something more like my 127 explore scientific and you know zooming in a lot more on that and see what i can get out of that one thing I also want to do in 2022 is go back to the DSLR for some Milky Way um, photography and using the star tracker and, and, and try my hand at that. I've never really done it. I've shot a couple like single exposures using a little action camera. Um, here's an example here. Not, not the greatest, that's for sure. So I want to do, you know, stack stackable images where I'm able to stack together, you know, uh, an hour or so of the Milky Way and, and, and get out to a dark site and and try my hand at that. There's so many facets to this hobby. It's, it really is amazing. So my primary focus is always going to be deep space. And especially now that I have some bigger telescopes, but still I do want to, you know, one night when I set up one of these scopes, also have the DSLR going with like a, I forget what I have, a 50 millimeter um, lens. I think I have that. I don't even know. It's been so long since I, since I looked at it, 50 millimeter or 24 millimeter, something like that. So I'll be using that in the new year. And of course I'll have videos on that. So that's what I'm looking forward to, continuing to push, push myself out of a comfort zone, um, using the new mount some more and seeing what the, what I can get out of that. Hopefully some five minute uh, unguided exposures and as well, when it comes to the channel, well, I want to have some more, you know, variety. I want to do some more uh, outside footage and get the proper setup for that. I want to improve my studio here. I know many of you guys have mentioned in the comments some tips for improving the quality especially when i'm farther away like i am there's a lot of shadows under my eyes and i'm working on improving that so that'll be something i work on as well for 2022 and also just sort of changing it up a bit my astrophotography target tip series um, maybe including some more outside footage in those videos and even some processing video all sort of in one video so trying to figure out how to do that without making an hour-long video is what i need to figure out still I know you guys don't want to sit through that and I don't blame you. So those are things I'm mulling over how to do that, you know, in my head and make that work and make it even better for you guys. And as well, I'd like to get out some dark sites and, and get that on, on, uh, you know, footage to, to share with you guys that experience. I was hoping to get out to, you know, some dark sites this year and that never really happened. I got out to Bordeaux five 
Um, so that was good. I, that was multiple times I was able to do that. And man, what a difference. I always say being in a dark sky site um, compared to like Bortle eight and a half, nine here in Toronto, it really is like a cheat code. It's, <laughs> you don't need nearly as long the integration time. The quality is so much better. It's, it's hard to really even explain. And, you know, it's just, there are certain targets that you just can't image from here in Toronto. So that's the goal. I have to make some plans to do that. And hopefully the, as I mentioned, the weather cooperates. I just want to say to you guys, if you're, if you're new to the channel or if you're just starting out, um, you know, even though I'm starting to use more complicated and bigger telescopes and stuff like that, I don't want you to feel like you're being left behind or, you know, there's a lot of things that you can still apply to um, using a DSLR and a star tracker. I have many videos on that. If you're if you're new to the channel, check out some of my older ones on you know the the the, the rig that I used starting out with um, the tripod, the star tracker, the DSLR, and a small telescope like the Sharp Star or even my Red Cat Fifty One, even my little Ascar that I did a video on as well. I was just using that the other night with my star tracker and I loved it. It's great using these the, the Optron mount and all that and the more and the you know the more complicated stuff, but it's also nice just go out, you know, especially when it's cold, it was freezing cold the other night. So I just set up my little uh, tripod, my star tracker. I didn't use a DSLR, I used my uh, astrophot astrophotography dedicated camera, but still just to use that simple setup, you know, you're, you're set up within 35, 40 minutes and you're imaging and it, that was nice. And then your tear down is much quicker as well. So it's always nice to go back to that. And if you're just starting out, you know, don't let that hold you back. You can still, you know, do some amazing images. And if you can't even, you know, afford maybe that, you just sort of have a, an old DSLR and a tripod, you know what? As I always say, if you can increase your equipment for whatever reason, maybe it's funds, maybe whatever it is, maybe you just don't have the space for it, you can always change where you um, image from. So if you've been doing most of your imaging from somewhere like here in Toronto or, a, you know, a, a maybe even a smaller city, why not go out to the country if you can? make your way out and plan it a night where you can get out under dark skies and just see the difference with that. Even that can make a huge difference on your images. It's not all about spending a ton of money and big, huge, expensive mounts and telescopes. Sometimes just going at dark sky sites can make a huge difference on your images. So I encourage you, whatever you're able to use, keep at it, keep working at it, keep making progress. And, you know, um, we'll have, try to keep a lot of variety for next year when it comes to this channel. But I just want to say as well, thank you so much to you guys. I really appreciate your support. I've had some really wonderful messages. Uh, I really do appreciate them. It's very encouraging. It's a lot of work to do this, but I really do enjoy it. I love talking about this hobby. Obviously, it's something that I enjoy greatly and I love teaching, um, especially for those who are newer to the channel and are just getting started out. I benefited from other channels and I hope that my channel is able to benefit you, especially as you begin this amazing hobby. So that's it, guys. Again, thank you so much. A lot to look forward to. Look for my official mount review video. That's coming next in my next video. 100%, no more delaying it, uh, and a lot more. So I look forward to sharing that with you. But for now, here's my review of 2021 when it came to my favorite images of last year. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you.